Infinity is big, I mean really big, so it's kind of a tough concept to get our hands on. So instead of reciting theorems and definitions, I'll tell you a story. This one's from David Hilbert, a famous mathematician. Suppose there was a hotel with an infinite number of rooms, one for each positive integer. Now, suppose you want to stay the night, but each room is full. In an ordinary hotel, you'd be out of luck, but in Hilbert's hotel, there's always room for more. To open up a room, the manager simply asks each guest to leave their room and move down one. Since there is no biggest integer, everyone has a new room and the first room is vacant. If we wanted to add another person after that, the same process would give us another room and so on. Thus, even when the hotel is full, we can still squeeze in more. If these infinite shenanigans seem odd, don't panic. I have no tricks up my sleeve. The only reason this might seem odd is that we are used to thinking about finite things. So hang on, because there's even more we can do. We now know that we can always squeeze in a finite number of guests, be it three or three trillion, but what if a bus with an infinite number of passengers showed up, one for each positive integer, and they all wanted rooms? We can find space for them as well. This time, the manager asks the guest in each room to move to the room with twice the number of the original, one to two, two to four, three to six, and so forth. Once this is done, all the even-numbered rooms are occupied, but all the odd-numbered are empty. So we can put bus passenger 1 in room 1, bus passenger 2 in room 3, and so on. We've now squeezed an infinite bus of extra guests into the hotel. Is there anything too big for this hotel? What if, instead of just one infinite bus, we had an infinite caravan of infinite buses, one bus for each positive integer? This might seem much bigger, but we can find rooms for all these guests as well. On the other hand, if an infinite crowd of people showed up, one person for every real number, like all the fractions, negative numbers, and irrational numbers, like pi, we could not find space for all of them, no matter how hard we try. Can you see why one scenario works and the other does not? Share your answers in the comments below.